Time and again, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have presented themselves as guardian angels attempting to drive hate off the World Wide Web. The exiled Duke and Duchess of Sussex used various media and public platforms to bemoan internet trolling, suggesting it has taken a significant toll on their mental health, with Meghan even claiming the negative reaction she received was, quote, almost unsurvivable during one unsuccessful bid to garner sympathy. And at the same time, it's a platform that has quite a bit of hate and rhetoric and incentivizes people to create pages where they can churn out very, very inciting comments and conspiracy theories that can have a tremendously negative effect on someone's mental health, um, their physical safety. So I think we have to really take a, a look at that. Harry, who by the way I'm told has several anonymous accounts to regularly patrol X and the other websites he claims to despise, has even taken on a role at the Commission of Information Disorder for the globalist organization, the Aspen Institute. So what if I told you this entire act is one big mirage, a publicity stunt at best, because Harry and Meghan are actually at the forefront of one of the biggest internet trolling gangs of the internet age. A gang unofficially led by a man who they consider a professional ally and friend called Christopher Boozy, who has been paid for research by Meghan and was then famously platformed in their high-profile Netflix reality show. A gang that I can pinpoint directly to starting horrendous rumours about the whereabouts of Catherine, the Princess of Wales, that spread around the world when, in fact, she had just received a devastating cancer diagnosis. A gang that has spent years spreading untrue information about Prince William's sexual preferences, often using bot farms and the dark arts of the internet to amplify damaging rumours. And a gang who proudly brand themselves as the Sussex Squad, which Harry and Meghan have never once publicly or privately condemned. Both Boozy and his army of trolls like to present themselves as do-gooders, trying to shut down bad behavior on the internet, when in fact, my extensive research and investigation has shown they are the ones perpetrating the worst trolling, at times threatening the lives and livelihoods of folk who have simply exercised their right to free speech by criticizing the public behavior of Harry and Meghan. My interest in uncovering the truth about this malignant squad is in part because for the past year, these online thugs have attempted to destroy my reputation by working with a handful of nefarious forces to spread total lies about me and my completely innocent partner who has no role in public life, by the way. As their behavior unravels after overplaying their hand during Kategate, today I make an unequivocal demand to Harry and Meghan. Publicly disassociate yourselves with the increasingly dangerous and deranged behavior of the Sussex squad or anything you ever say again about the cruelty of the internet is worthless. Now, while Harry and Meghan will claim they have nothing to do with the Sussex squad, this graphic shows the close connections between the former royals, their PR mouthpieces, Omid Scoby and Boozy, and their three main troll leaders. I had been aware of the Sussex squad for years because they had regularly targeted me after I broke a number of seismic stories about Prince Harry and his wife, including their decision to make it. In January 2020, many of the biggest Sussex squad accounts would parrot briefings received by Meghan's former LA PR agency Sunshine Sachs, which is famous for using unconventional methods online to protect their clients. But it was only last May when I discovered just how far this group would go to take down enemies of their heroes. Head Sussex troll, Sarah Data an anonymous account with around 20,000 followers who I have evidence showing she has worked closely with Boozy in the past, began to post unthinkable criminal allegations against both me and my boyfriend. On May the 27th, 2023, Sarah Data wrote that I would, quote, soon be exposed for a number of despicable crimes I had never committed. Now, I'm not going to amplify her lies again here, but she added whoever is protecting him now 
will go down with him. Let me tell you, the Sussex squad are smaller numbers, but use the dark arts of the internet to boost their message. Sarah Data is the biggest example of that. I've connected her to at least 12 accounts on X. As one of the royal family supporters who has been investigating Sarah Data's activities too explained, her bullying against journalists, YouTubers and users of social media has escalated progressively from aggressive insults to a complex effort coordinating mass reporting and harassment as well as fundraising to wage vicious campaigns of character assassinations with real world consequences. Now, I have learned that Sarah Data is an Ethiopian-born, Swedish-educated U.S. citizen who lives in Tribeca in New York City and worked for Facebook and Google after studying computer science at the University of Chicago, explaining her interest in the tech industry and mass media. Before joining the campaign against the royal family on behalf of Harry and Meghan in mid-2020, she seemed more focused on left-wing political issues like Black Lives Matter. In a series of conversations on X with my partner who threatened her with legal action for the false claims against him, Sarah Data admitted to posting information, false information, fed to her by both my deranged ex and Byline Times who had been working with Prince Harry to try and destroy me. She conceded she had done nothing to fact check the highly defamatory claims and she actually apologised to my partner, claiming he was simply collateral damage in the squad's bid to cancel me. So in July 2023, when Byline Times began publishing a completely untrue series of hit pieces against me, the Sussex squad, well, they began to crowdfund to continue the campaign of hate. Almost immediately, Sarah Data pledged that the Sussex squad would raise a six-figure sum for the journalist behind the stories, writing, 100K, I can guarantee you will have it by the end of the week. We are rallying your fundraiser and we have raised more than that in the past. On July the 24th, she revealed that the Sussex squad had been responsible for raising £11,000 of the £13,000 for that campaign in just 24 hours. She later hosted a series of spaces on X to coordinate the hate campaign among 636 hardcore Sussex Squad trolls. Now, I've obtained the audio of one of these on August the 9th, 2023. Listen. What I'm thinking of in terms of this, guys, I know there's a lot going on with Harry, the Japan trip and stuff. I'm going to be honest with you guys. This is a priority for me because we're just about to like, he's about to fall off yeah. the edge. We can so do both. It, so it's like, we can't, we can't come this far and like sleep on this thing because we have to see it through. This is our chance. You never get a momentum back yeah. when you have a moment. So timing is everything, yeah. right? So, so here's the thing. I also remember Invictus is coming. So when it's Invictus, this is, we're going to go 100% on that, right? So this is our chance. We have to get this down before Invictus. He has to lose everything before that. That that's 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 what I've been stressing about. I don't know if you guys think about things that way, but I do. Just this is my hobby. So on July the fourteenth, twenty twenty three, amid a series of deranged theories, Sarah Data wrote of me and Prince William. He's a friend of anyone who will brief against their own family, friends, and colleagues in exchange for positive headlines. It's what William did to Harry, and why Harry had no option but to go nuclear. Dan is running a protection extortion racket. Now, of course, nothing could be further from the truth. I was simply a journalist, breaking stories from a host of sources, including those close to Harry. On July the 18th, 2023, seemingly admitting that the campaign against me was in direct retaliation for my coverage of Harry and Meghan, Sarah Data wrote, all he had to do is leave our faves alone. After I was suspended by GB News on September the 27th, 2023, due to Lawrence Fox saying he did not want to shag a female journalist during an appearance on my top-rated primetime show, Sarah Data celebrated the victory on behalf of the Sussex squad, writing, Dan Wilson suspended. Mission complete. GB News found the perfect reason to fire him. No deeper investigation needed, just an easy buy. But in January, as internet sleuths began to work out her identity, Sarah Data started deleting hundreds of messages. 
On March the 14th, armed with the knowledge that I was now aware of her true identity, Sarah Data quit her campaign of trolling on X altogether. Two days beforehand, she had written to her followers, Sussex Squad, we've got everything we want. Royal family in shambles, I hear. But then she told her supporters in a private message group that has been leaked to me, I discussed it with the ladies in the voice chat, and I felt supported in just moving on. The Sarah Data persona is a toxic one, and I feel it has done what it needs to do. Why let it stay around and become a symbol of deranges ire? I want the squad to evolve and make room for new squaddy with new talents and methods. Because I'm not there to do the opposition research necessary with an account like that, I have to shut it down. I want to kill the persona and move on with my life like I'm tired. It's been four years of scheming and plotting. I'm simply tired. Sarah Data then revealed her first name and added that she wasn't quitting the campaign altogether just as its leader. She clarified, I'm not going anywhere, getting small Twitter account and just want to be another squatty without all the other stuff. Don't want to be a persona that needs active managing. She then attempted to delete all evidence of her campaign from internet archives. But what exists is Sarah Data's connections to Harry and Meghan's friend Boozy who has branded Prince William a balding Muppet. Analysis of her post suggests a formal collaboration began around September 2021. They spoke on a podcast together in May 2022. And on December the 5th, 2022, when Boozy appeared in Harry and Meghan's Netflix series, she posted, Our very own master Boozy sharing his expertise with what might be close to a billion viewers. Boozy is a true ally, friend and brother to women everywhere. She also helped crowdfund for Boozy's bot Sentinel business, which is ironically designed to identify trolls on social media. They know all about that, don't they? Now, Boozy has actually publicly acknowledged knowing Sarah Data, responding to claims that it was actually him running her account. So this is what he wrote on June the 17th, 2022. He said, now anti-Harry and Meghan accounts claim I am, wait for it, Sarah Data. Sarah and I have recorded several Twitter spaces together and we have literally talked simultaneously. Many of these people are 50 plus years old. How much lead paint was used in the 60s and early 70s? On September 12th, 2022, their collaboration was ongoing as he publicly tweeted her, check your DM. Now, Sarah Data has collaborated with other leading figures of the Sussex squad. One of them is Ian Sexton, a self-proclaimed global citizen from Tampa with over 310,000 followers who has promoted the unofficial PR message of Harry and Meghan while spreading outrageous abuse about the royal family with particular acrimony saved for the current queen. So on December the 19th, 2022, he tweeted, Camilla, the queen consort, is in league with her fellow abusers, Piers Morgan and Jeremy Clarkson, against all women, and particularly Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex. She has no shame. Then, on March the 29th, 2023, he attempted to link the king with Nazi Germany. Posting King Charles III skips town and takes his adulterous side piece, Queen Consort Camilla, to see his home country of Germany, while Prince Harry wipes the floor with their buddy Lord Rothermere, whose grandfather was also an admirer of Hitler. Hashtag go Harry, hashtag good King Harry. Just a quick reminder here of the Nazi within the royal family, or at least the royal family member who wore Nazi uniform in public. But it was only during the recent hysteria regarding Catherine, the Princess of Wales, that the true malignant influence of the Sussex squad gained international prominence. My analysis shows it was anti-royal family accounts connected to the Sussex squad who created the false narrative that Kate had disappeared from the public view for reasons other than her legitimate health concerns. The post that started it all on January the 20th was by an account called I Love Lucci which posted fingers and face, shoving, incandescent rage, screaming matches, a sudden hospitalization, a disappearance for months, hashtag bullium, did something, and like Harry, Kate was told to shut up or else. She doesn't even have custody of her kids. Charles does. Hashtag what Will did. Hashtag where is Kate? 
Now, bully him is the Sussex squad code for William, incorrectly suggesting that he has violent tendencies. The hashtag, is Kate alive, was soon added. And then it was used by the Sussex squad on posts like this for weeks. My sources say key Sussex squad accounts run bot farms designed to spread stories using tens of thousands of fake accounts able to trick the X algorithm and make topics trend. During Catherine's absence from the public eye as she underwent abdominal surgery and was later diagnosed with cancer, this meant fringe Sussex squad theories, literally made up, by the way, to cause maximum bad publicity for William, ended up bleeding into the mainstream media. While China, Russia, and Iran may have amplified the rumours, I believe the stories didn't emanate from those rogue states, but rather they emanated from the Sussex squad. A fellow investigator of the rumours told me, we believe the bots are from Megan's digital PR, possibly facilitated supporters involved in digital marketing. The idea of Russian and Chinese bots may be planted as a distraction to shift the blame for the barrage of bots employed to target Princess Catherine. Although it is possible that state actors may attempt to capitalise on the internal conflict and division fuelled by Harry and Meghan's hate campaign against the British monarchy, the time and circumstances in which we saw a dramatic increase of the use of bots against Catherine suggests that it comes from those connected to the Sussex squad. Now, shockingly, Boozy's hate campaign against Catherine has continued even after the cancer announcement. He has continued to peddle the conspiracy theory that the son's pictures of William and Catherine at that Windsor farm shop were faked, claiming that he's used facial comparison recognition tools to determine the video is not of the princess. He wrote to pretend the woman in the video as Kate is QAnon-level stuff. He has also cast doubt on the authenticity of Catherine's official video announcement of her diagnosis, which I just think is plain wrong. Employing Markle-style tactics, Boozy has also claimed the increased media scrutiny surrounding his role in the Sussex squad trolling is rooted in racism. But in regards to his connections to the Sussex squad, he'd only add vaguely, I have never threatened, made death threats, or slurred anyone from the royal family, nor have I ever stated, implied, or suggested that I am a member of any group. But just last week on X, he wrote, I will join the Sussex squad tonight at 7.15 for an in-depth discussion on everything that happened in the past few days. Bring your popcorn. After being rumbled on X, I can reveal the main plotting for the Sussex squad has actually now moved to Discord. This is the more private social network designed to allow groups and organizations to communicate via voice, video, text messaging, and file swapping. And unbelievably, on this platform, the conversation has turned even nastier. Pagan Trelawney, one of the leaders of the Sussex Squad, who is believed to be a British branding and advertising expert with insider knowledge, has been spreading a nasty rumour that the Queen encouraged her husband's cancer diagnosis. So she wrote to Sussex Squad followers on Discord, speaking of Charles, he's been wearing that lead paint since the coronation. Camilla probably laced it with arsenic so she can end this farce and retire in a bottle of gin with all the duchy millions. Proof that the Sussex squad, empowered by driving the Princess of Wales to reveal her cancer diagnosis earlier than she had planned, are only going to get worse. Given the stress currently facing the royal family with both Catherine and the Queen undergoing serious treatment for cancer, Harry and Meghan must put an end to this madness. But I can guarantee you, they won't.